we are going to figure out what is up with your battery. And we're talking about smart batteries and I'm using a smart charger. So to keep it simple, there's a lot these can do, but I'll tell you what we're gonna focus in on and what I think is the most important. And that is the individual cell voltages, which are easily accessed on the charger. After that, internal resistance. It's possible, it doesn't happen very often, but it's possible to have a battery that gives you a, a balanced reading between the cells, whether two, three, four, six cell battery. You could have a good reading and a full charge, but let's say that vehicle or that plane should fly five, seven minutes, but you're only getting three minutes, but you're like, what's going on? My batteries are fine, so you're thinking ESC, you're thinking motor, something. Check out your batteries first. Eliminate that as a possibility. If your internal resistance numbers are really high, or one is high and the other two are low, or there's a huge disparity between the readings, then that's an issue. And that would explain why you're getting a, a weird short run time on this battery and maybe not another one. So anyway, we're gonna get the camera off the sticks and on this charger, we're gonna poke around, show you how to easily access the individual cell voltage readings, the internal resistance readings, and how to program your battery for the auto discharge interval that you want. And I'll also show you how to set up storage charge on the charger as well. You initiate the charge just like you would any other time, but it won't go to 4.2 volts per cell. It's gonna stop at 3.8 volts per cell. So it's worth it to get a nice smart charger with an LCD screen and it's even more worth it when you understand all it can do for you and I think it will help add enjoyment to the RC hobby for you. I hope it does because in, in my estimation it's funner to open up a box with a car or a plane in it when I can afford to pick up an RC rather than Batteries are like a necessary evil. You have to have them, but they're not fun to buy like it is the thing. So my goal here is to show you how to do those, what I think the most important things to focus on uh, as far as keeping an eye on the health of your batteries for extended enjoyment because they're expensive. Who wants to buy a bunch of batteries, right? So keep care of them. I'm gonna show you how, let's get into it. Uh, you can see that there is the balance lead receptacle right here. Your balance leads, if you have G1 batteries, generation one batteries or another company's batteries, your balance lead will go in here as far left as you can get it regardless of two, three, four or six cell. This is the IC3 size and that is the IC5 size. If you have a G2 battery with no balance lead, you'll just simply plug it in. Um, we'll do that right now. One way to access the individual cell readings is from this screen here when your battery is already charging. So by toggling down one time, I can see the individual cell readings. And you're going to hear me always say per cell because the overall voltage, that's great. The number's there, so is the percentage of, of how much the battery's done already. But for me, keeping health in mind, the per cell readings is what I want to pay attention to. So right here, we're just below storage charge, and this battery will work its way all the way up to 100% and then be done. If this were a six cell battery instead of a three cell battery, a 3S, then you would have numbers over here as well. And it's so easy to also access that internal resistance I spoke of. And you'll just toggle down one more time and you can see the overall internal resistance is 26.7. Each cell, 8.4, 9.3, 9.0.
not completely crazy, uh, I'm going with it. It's fine. So I think that's really fantastic. And that's from charging. So if I stop the charger, now I can toggle through and see other information. This battery has five cycles on it. Uh, no faults at all. Toggle down again. I can see how many today. Uh, this charger has charged 640 different batteries. You can see that right there. Toggle down again and I'm back to my storage. Uh, I'm back to my per cell readings. So it takes a few more times if you're not charging to access the individual cells, but it can still be done. But you're not going to get the internal resistance unless, we'll go ahead and start it. Start it. Once you're charging, then you can get the internal resistance by just toggling down twice. Now some of these, most of these LCD chargers are going to offer you all these features. If you have something like the S155, you're not going to have the same access that I'm going to show you here with something like the S1100 or S2200. Um, but let's go ahead and stop this because I want to show you uh, everything. So we're just going to toggle through the menus real quick. Actually, we can do it from here. So now that we're on this screen, we've pressed the button and held it. We've got some options here. Smart battery settings, system settings, charger history, and back. This button will always take you back. But I want to start at the top. So we'll go all the way up here. So if you're on this screen, where you can start it from and you toggle up task is what you're looking for and then you enter in here if you want to set storage or discharge your battery and if you set storage you just toggle down to this and press it and now the task is not on charge it's on storage charge because it's a smart battery it already knows it's at three S. It's a 3S battery. This is a 2200 milliamp battery, so me charging at 2.2 amps is 1C. If this was a 5000 milliamp battery and I wanted to charge at 1C, I would enter here into current and change my amps to 5. So a 5000 milliamp battery, which is what a lot of you have, 1C would be 5 amps. So that's fantastic. And we can toggle down and we can start the charge if we'd like. We can keep on toggling down and look at the smart battery settings. And this is where we find our auto discharge. If I want to change the timing of the auto discharge, I will select this and toggle it down. If I don't want my batteries to auto discharge on their own at all, I will simply select off by pushing this button. I'm okay with the three days, which came by default on these batteries I'm using right here. So I'm just going to leave it at 72 and select it. Again, the charge current is set to 5 amps. The voltage, we haven't changed it. That's what per cell 4.2 is the goal. I can look at the battery history. This battery is a relatively new one. It's only got 5 charges on it. I can go back and then I can keep on toggling down and look at how many faults I have on the battery. There are none. That's great. And go back keep on toggling down and if I needed to update the battery if you ever have an anomaly with the battery that doesn't seem to make sense it's not working like it's supposed to and you're able to access these screens you can go ahead and hit the battery update button and wait for it to complete and you can go back so we're gonna go back but we're just gonna take one more look at this Yeah, so here we go. We're going back, and now we'll toggle down again. 
and we're in system settings. And this is where you're gonna have things that you don't really need to mess with. By, by default, these are fine. Uh, this auto charge down here at the bottom is where, it's the way it comes by default. Auto charge means when you plug in a smart battery, it's gonna automatically start the charge, um, just like I showed you before. Our goal today is to just focus in on what the most important things are that I would consider uh, being somebody who has messed with RC for quite a while. Um, charger history again is going to tell you how many charge cycles I've done today um, in total and some of the other basic information. There's nothing to see there really. But yes, the most important thing is the individual cell voltages, which you can see by toggling down three times if you're not charging, and it only takes two times if you are. So everything's looking really good right here. And it's at storage, I have it set to storage charge, so when these get to 3.8, 3.9 I think is what I got it set to right now um, this will stop so it won't be at a full charge what I want to do is stop the charge and get into my screen here that says charger settings toggle up to task which it's almost hidden there it's it, you have to toggle up to expose it so when you first get into this menu When you first get into the charger setting menu, what you're looking for is task. But as you can see, the first thing it's telling you is that it's a LiPo battery, how many cells, and what charge rate you're set to as far as amps go to charge it. So once you get to this menu, it says charger settings, you want to get to the task line, which is going to be accessed from toggling up select it with the what I call the play button scroll up to charge select it again and now you're good to go so you can come back and then just press it and start it and if you're gonna leave and you want to stop the charge you can press and hold that's gonna take you back here select stop Go ahead and unplug your battery. Unplug the balance lead first is what I've done. And then the battery itself. Now without a battery on here, you can also set this up. So without a battery on the charger at all, you can get in here and select. If you had batteries that were from another manufacturer and they weren't smart and it's a 4S battery, you would select that. If it's a 2S battery from another manufacturer, you would select that and then begin. We'll just go back to 3, uh, select that. And again, there's no battery on here right now, but we can still set our task for discharge the battery or to storage charge. Let's just do storage. And we can select our storage charge to be... 3.8 which is how batteries are basically shipped to you you even get a thumbs up right there that's awesome but we're gonna go to we're gonna go back up to charge pretty awesome and then we'll just toggle through see what kind of things are available you can't really start it right now so there's not a lot you're gonna do from here but access some of this. Now we can go back and here you are back at the menu, nothing's going on, you've got the question mark. Nothing's really gonna happen. You can get into here and there's some basic functionality, but your access is greater when you are actually plugged in to a battery. Hopefully that helps teach you how to get around on your smart charger. Keep in mind, if you have an S155, you may not have all the features that you see here. 
in regards to the auto discharge being able to set those intervals and also the storage and discharge options are not going to be on the S155 but I do love the S155 as the best bargain charger because you do still have an interface that looks just like this and is very similar in the features that it offers. I love being able to see the progress bar on the batteries themselves. I think it's super great to be able to take a look at the individual cell voltages to keep an eye on and track the health of your battery. And you can also, again, check for those faults and see how many cycles your battery does have with this machine. So understanding the machine is going to help you, I hope, have an even better time with RC. And um, I hope that's exactly what we've accomplished here by doing this today. It's that easy. Links in the description if you're wanting to shop any of this stuff for yourself. Check out the rest of the channel. Been having a ball with RCs for a long time. There are a ton of airplane and jet videos on the channel, as well as some really cool surface stuff as well. Some bashers and a lot of crawlers. I've been doing a lot of custom builds with a 3D printer. Uh, check out the channel, hit that subscription bell, whatever it is, and turn on your notifications so you'll get alerted when we go live. We do a live on Thursday that's all about crawlers and custom builds. And then Sunday night we talk about airplanes. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.